we will continue on with the Cal Bears. And Justin Wilcox had an opportunity last year to head to Oregon to take that job, and he did not do it, which I, I'm a little surprised by. Went 5-7 and seven last year. Uh, went 7-5 and five against the spread. Their postgame win expectancy says that they should have won six games. Uh, the turnover margin was good, but the penalties per game, number 75, that wasn't great. Their offensive PPA per drive was actually not bad, number 58 in that spot. Defensively, number 57, they're used to being a little bit better than that. Uh, this was a, a strange, strange season for them last year, but they do lose Cameron Good, the linebacker. They lose safety Elijah Hicks and uh, cornerback Josh Drayden. I, that's, that's massive losses. I mean, just massive uh, they lose a couple of really good offensive linemen in Daltoso and Metauer. Uh, he transferred out. I hope I said that right. Defensive end J.H. Tevis transferred out as well. They uh, they lost wide receiver Kakoa Crawford as well. Looking at the offense here, Purdue transfer quarterback Jack Plummer joins. He tries to improve on the number 96 uh, passing success rate here. Offense only returns 31% of production. This team overall, by the way, only returns 45% of their production from last season. That's number 126 in the country. There's only 131 teams, so that's definitely not good. On offense, it's even worse than that. They are number 127, and they only return 31% of the offense. So uh, that number 58 for the offensive PPA per drive, probably not going to be up there again this year. But uh, you never know. I mean, Plummer was okay when he played at Purdue last year. Um they were number 58 in PPA per drive. They were number 96 in points per game. They were number 89 in points per scoring opportunity. Wilcox's offense has got to find a way to start finishing drives and, and maybe be a little more aggressive. Um, explosive play rate, they were number 96. Passing success rate, number 96. Like, they were good at running the ball, uh, but this is going to be tricky this year. Certainly tricky for that offense. Um uh, I, at what point do they do they have to swap staff? At what what point do they have to figure out? Like we got to change our offensive philosophy. That's what I'm waiting to see uh, on defense. I mean, this should be another top forty unit, even though they're. I mean, they're number seventy eight in returning production, sixty percent coming back. Um, they they added the linebacker Jackson Sermon from Washington. They added the defensive end Xavier Carlton from Utah. Like even losing seven of fourteen players that had two hundred fifty plus snaps. They still got dudes, and and Wilcox's system works. Like, that scheme absolutely works. They were number 21 in defensive points per play last year. Uh, linebacker and defensive line are strengths, even with losing six of their top eight tacklers. Like, this is just a, a trust issue. Like, I, I fully trust, uh, and if you're watching on the screen, you were seeing me try and keep myself from sneezing because, my God, my allergies are acting up here. Um, they lost six of their eight tacklers. And this is faith in Wilcox and his defense. Like, I fully believe that he is going to find a way to have a good defense, and I believe that he will fully find a way to not have a very good offense. That's what he's done basically all the time. Uh, the top players here, I, I put Plummer on here. I put uh, center Matthew Sendrick on it. Uh, Daniel Scott, the safety linebacker, Jackson Sermon that I just talked about, and Xavier Carlton. Uh, those guys, I, I really got a lot of faith in. So, Wilcox uh, had the opportunity to take the Oregon job. As I mentioned before, he passed on it. Like, does that buy him even more time at Cal, even if he can't get the offense going? Um, you got to keep the turnover margin. If you can't get the offense going, you at least got to keep the turnover margin about where it was. It's number 11 in the country. Uh, you can't be turning the football over. You can't beat yourself, for sure. Uh, defense got to get better against the run. They were number 51 uh, in yards per rush allowed, number 98 in rushing success rate allowed. Like, that is not going to cut it in the Pac-12 for sure. Uh, I've got him at 6-6. Six and six. i got to make it a bowl game. I, I like Wilcox. I like what he's doing, and I feel like they should have made a bowl game last year. And, you know, you find a way to beat yourself a couple of times. So, definitely not good there. I've got wins over UC Davis, UNLV, Arizona, at Colorado, and a win over Washington, and a win over Stanford. Now, Anybody that they have lost to, or that I've got them losing to, I could see them beating. Anybody that I see them beating, I could see them losing to. That's what's tricky about this team is you don't know what you're going to get really from week to week other than a great defensive performance. They just have to find a way to score points to win games, 
and they make scoring look so hard. Like, I don't understand how they do that. So, I, six and six is, is the way that I'm rolling on this, but man, like, they, this is a tough team to read every single year. You just imagine they're going to be a right around that break even point because they'll win some that they're not supposed to win. They'll lose some they're not supposed to lose. This is what's crazy about the Pac 12. There are a lot of these teams that are just like this because things get crazy. Like, we all know about the hashtag Pac-12 After Dark. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.